Hey guys, we are solving this rational inequality and I'm going to give you some pretty specific steps to follow to solve this. Now, as we're doing it, you might be like, okay, I can do that, but it's a little weird or I don't get why we're doing that or why it works. At the end, I'm going to show you why it worked and it's so cool, you guys. So stick around for that. Okay. As we are doing this, it is easiest to solve these when we have everything on one side and zero on the other side. So here we're good. All right, the next thing I'm going to do is factor this bottom part. So if you need a factoring review, I will link one in the corner for you. But I'm going to tell you that this is going to factor 2, x plus 2 times x plus 6. All right, and we're still less than 0. From here, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set each of these equal to zero. So I'm going to take x plus 3, set it equal to zero, x plus 2 equal to zero, and x plus 6 equal to zero. This is where I was saying, if you're like, why are we doing that? I'll explain it at the end. Okay, I'm going to solve each of these for x. So on this top one, I would subtract 3 from both sides, get x equals negative 3. Next one, I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides and subtract 6 from both sides. All right, the next thing we're going to do is set up everybody's favorite thing, a number line. Inequalities and number lines are best friends probably forever. So I'm going to graph or plot, might be a better word, each of these points on my number line. So I'm going to have negative 2 negative three and negative six would be about here. It doesn't have to be perfectly spaced. Okay, so I wanna put a point at each of these spots, but I need to know if it's going to be an open or a closed circle. So just by knowing this, I know that negative two and negative six are going to be open circles. And the reason for that is because if I plug either of those into this inequality, it'll make my denominator zero which is a big humongous no-no in math. So I know negative six and negative two are going to be open circles. But what about negative three? Well, because we have that this is less than zero, it's going to be an open circle as well. If this happened to be less than or equal to with that line under, this would be a closed circle, okay? But for this example, it's open. All right, from here, we are going to do what is called sign analysis. And you may have done this before. If not, or if you have, we're going to do it right now. So what we're going to do is we want to know for each of these regions, to the left of negative 6, in between these two, in between these two, and to the right of negative 2, are, is it positive or negative? So all I'm going to do is I'm going to pick any point to the left of negative 6. I'm just going to pick negative 10. I'm going to plug in negative 10 to this inequality. And the funny thing is, since we're doing sign analysis, I don't actually care what my number answer is. I only care if it's positive or negative. So I'm going to plug this in. If I were to plug in negative 10 for x, on top, I would have negative 10 plus 3, which would give me a negative. Then on bottom, if I plug in negative 10, I'd have negative 10 plus 2, which would give me a negative. Negative 10 plus 6, which would give me another negative. So then on top, I have a negative. On bottom, I have a negative times a negative, which gives me a positive. And then a negative divided by a positive is negative. So this region to the left of negative 6 is negative. Now, if you didn't like that whole sign business we did and you want to figure out the actual number, go for it. But all we really need to know is that it's negative. All right, now I'm going to pick a number between negative 6 and 3. Let's just pick negative 4. So when I plug in negative 4, I get negative 4 plus 3 on top, which would be negative. And on bottom, I get negative 4 plus 2, that would be negative, and negative 4 plus 6, which would be positive. So then on top, I've got a negative. 
on bottom. I've got a negative times a positive, which is negative. And then I've got a negative divided by a negative, which is positive. Okay. Next, we are going to pick a number between negative three and negative two. So let's pick negative 2.5. And when I plug that in, negative 2.5 plus 3 would give me a positive. Negative 2.5 plus 2 would give me a negative. Negative 2.5 plus 6 would give me a positive. So on top, I have positive. On bottom, those would multiply and be negative. Positive divided by negative is negative. Whew. So this region, we're negative. All right, I need a number to the right of negative 2. I could pick any number. Let's pick 10. Why not? So when I plug in a positive 10, I get 10 plus 3 on top, which is positive. 10 plus 2, which is positive, And 10 plus 6, which is also positive. And all those positives would end up being positive. But let's go ahead and look back at this, where we are saying that, we, or well, we are wondering where this is less than 0 right? So what is less than zero? Well, negative numbers are less than zero. So that would mean this area and this area where when I did sign analysis, those regions were what came out negative, okay? So this graph represents my answer, but your teacher probably doesn't want you just to turn that in as your answer. They probably either want it in inequality form as your answer or interval notation. So if I were to do this as inequalities, I would say X can be less than negative six, not equal to, cause that's an open circle, or X can be, and we are, we're trying to represent this area right here. So we've got our negative three and X is bigger than the negative three and less than the negative two. Not equal to, again, because they're open circles. So if you pick any number that falls within these restrictions and plug it in for X, you will come out with something that makes this inequality true. You'll come up with a number on this side that is less than zero. All right, if I wanted to show this in interval notation, I would say pick a number from negative infinity to negative six. Both of those get parentheses because, well, infinity and negative infinity always get parentheses. And since we can't actually be negative six, we get a parenthesis. If this were filled in, it would be a bracket. And then we do a U for union to show it's together with this other one where we're gonna say you can also pick a number from negative three to negative two, and again, parentheses, because you can't actually be those numbers. Okay, you're like, great, we found the answers, but that was weird, that felt weird. So let me show you why this worked, okay? Let's pretend for a second that I wanted to graph, don't freak out because I said graph, it's gonna be okay. Pretend I wanted to graph this x plus 3 over x squared plus 8x plus 12. Let's say I was graphing this. That's just this, but I'm setting it equal to 0 because it's like, what if I wanted to graph that? Now, I'm not going to spend a lot of time explaining how to graph this because I actually have a video where I graph this exact rational equation. So I'll link that in the corner for you. But I'm going to tell you quickly, if I were to graph this, I would figure out my vertical asymptotes by setting these equal to zero. So I'd figure out they are at negative two and duh, 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 pretend like I'm doing that really fast and negative six. There we go. There are my vertical asymptotes. I would figure out that my horizontal asymptote is at zero because the top degree is less than the bottom. So I'd have a horizontal asymptote there. And then I would figure out that my x, where my x intercept is by setting this equal to zero. And I would figure out that it is at x, sorry, at negative three. And then by applying what I know about graphs and asymptotes and things, I would figure out that this graph looks something like this. 
Dun, dun, dun. Okay, like that. Okay, from here, guys, this is where it's cool, okay? Where is this? This is what we just graphed, right? Where is it less than zero? Let's look. Well, it is less than zero. Oh, let me scoot it over or up. I don't know. We'll, okay, right here. Where is it less than zero? It is less than zero from negative infinity all the way to negative six, but it can actually be negative six. That's where the asymptote is. And then it's also less than zero from negative three to negative two. It can actually be negative three because that's right on the zero and it can't be negative two because that's the asymptote. But guys, do you see how this worked? When we set each of these equal to zero, we were actually finding this one was our x-intercept and these ones were our asymptotes. That's why we set those equal to zero. And then this whole sign analysis business was just figuring out from each of those spots, the negative six, the negative three, the negative two, which way, which direction the graph was going. Okay, so that's why we set them equal to zero. That's why we did the sign analysis. And that's how we got our answer. And I think it's so cool.